VFL, isn't it? Oh, uh, hello. Welcome to the introduction to fiber optics, where we explore the fiber infrastructure that facilitates, well, all of this. As you can see, this is a massive field that's still growing, still evolving, and requires repair when needed. My hope is that you will find this a fascinating field to learn, to work with, and that most of us take for granted every day. So let's begin our first video. Let there be light. Hey, this is technological, not biblical. Sheesh. Oh, and this isn't your usual boring educational video, as you may have gathered. Yeah, maybe a little cheesy, but hopefully not boring. Uh, I'll see you later. By today's standards, fiber optics is nothing new, yet its influence on technology continues to advance even as I speak. It has allowed us to transfer unprecedented amounts of information from almost any location on the surface of our planet. It began its influence in telecommunications in the 1960s and 70s, and half a century later we still don't know the limits of what we can achieve with this medium. It is important to realize that fiber optics have a multitude of type and application, and it's important to realize that this course will explore fiber optics and its application in the field of telecommunications. In this video, I want you to name the components of a simple point-to-point -point fiber optic link, recognize how light is emitted from an atom, describe the velocity and frequency of electromagnetic energy, and calculate the frequency and wavelength of an electromagnetic wave. To have a full understanding of today's optical networks is no easy task for anyone. It's important to keep in mind, however, that these complex networks are simply a mesh of point-to-point -point links like you see here. A transmitter that would be a focused light source such as a laser that is modulated or to say turning off and on corresponding to the data that is to be transmitted. This is sent through our kilometers of fiber optic cable and received at point B where the modulated light is now transferred back to its original electrical digital form. Before we analyze the components of a fiber optic system, it is important to understand just what light is and how it's used in our communications. Let's be clear though, this is a deep topic, one which we need only scratch the surface for now. According to Wikipedia, the photon is a type of elementary particle. It is the quantum of the electromagnetic field including electromagnetic radiation such as light and radio waves, and the force carrier for the electromagnetic force. Okay. Okay, maybe we should generalize that. Let's look at a photon as a subatomic particle to get an idea of where they come from. This atom has three electrons orbiting a nucleus in their natural orbits, and when this atom absorbs energy, let's say from an electrical current, an electron will move to a higher orbit. When this electron returns to its natural orbit, the energy that was absorbed by the atom will be released in the form of a photon. However, notice that its movement when released is a wave-like pattern. This wave-like pattern occurs because a photon is simply a bundle of electromagnetic energy, no different than a radio wave, a microwave, or an x-ray. The one unique characteristic from one type of electromagnetic energy to another is the frequency at which these waves oscillate. Not to be confused with its velocity, or to say how fast they travel, that we will get to in a moment. Frequency simply refers to the rate which these waves vary in magnitude, like the sine wave here which is measured in hertz. Like the 60 hertz power lines on the streets and in our homes, or a more suitable example would be our 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi signals if we want to keep thinking in terms of electromagnetic energy, which has differences from the electrical alternating currents in our copper wires. How fast it moves from the top to the bottom of the sine wave is a function of frequency, and again this frequency doesn't tell us the speed of the wave moving forward. Now, all electromagnetic waves travel at the same continuous speed in any medium, but it differs from medium to medium. Most of you are probably familiar with the speed C, which represents the infamous speed of light in a vacuum, about 300,000 kilometers per second, and this is a number you are expected to know, as it will serve as an important reference for some basic math we need to do. It'll be easy, I swear. Now, while our atmosphere on Earth is certainly not a vacuum, electromagnetic energy is only slightly slower than it would otherwise be in a vacuum. It's actually 99.99% of speed C. 
Now again, why is this important? This sets up a reference that will come into play when we get to the math. So now that we know what light is, photons or bundles of electromagnetic energy that is differentiated by frequency measured in hertz, which is the reciprocal of time for one cycle. This brings us to the electromagnetic spectrum. Most of you are probably familiar with this as we have many uses harnessing this energy from radio waves at the lower end of frequency that we use for our phones, walkie talkies, AM and FM broadcasts. There are microwaves that we, yes, use for microwaves as well as Wi-Fi. And above microwave we have infrared light, the light we can't see with the naked eye but going above infrared we have our visible light spectrum. Now as far as fiber optics are concerned, the light that is used to send information is all infrared. We can and do use visible light sources in fiber optics, particularly red, but it's used only as a means of tracing lines and or troubleshooting. While the electromagnetic spectrum is separated into the bands of frequency, it can also be viewed as the wavelength associated with a given frequency. Back to our moving photon animation, we measured the time of a cycle. But between those same points we use to measure time can also measure space, the physical distance between those two points that we will measure in meters. And we can only do this knowing the velocity or speed of light within the medium the light travels in. So let's try an actual example, and we only need basic algebra to figure this out. The time interval for a single cycle we'll say is 2.17 femtoseconds or 2.17 times 10 to the minus 15. This reciprocal will calculate to about 462 terahertz. That's faster than gigahertz. To convert this frequency to its corresponding wavelength in, let's do free space. So this light we will say travels at speed C, or 300,000 kilometers per second, which is divided by the frequency, 462 terahertz, which gives us a wavelength that's the Greek letter lambda equal to 649 nanometers, which the average person perceives as a color red. Terminology may be tricky because this is new, but the math is not complicated. And don't worry about associating wavelength with color as our application will reside in infrared, where there is no perceived color. Ah, okay, okay. This place looks like a science fiction sewer. Uh, anyways, let's leave things there. Uh, go do the review questions that are associated with this video. Uh, now that you know what a basic point-to-point -point fiber optic link is, and we're going to go into detail on every aspect of that point-to-point -point link. Uh, you know where light comes from and how it moves and where it resides on the electromagnetic spectrum and you know how to calculate frequency and wavelength. So in the next video we're going to look at what happens when light moves through materials with different densities and why that really matters to the principles of how fiber optics works. Uh, so we'll see you in the next video. You use that door and I'll use that door. See ya.